All right, everybody, this is the first topic for unit eight. We're gonna to try to go all the way through it. If you're joining me by YouTube, this will be a little bit longer video, okay? Um, normally I'd break something like this down, but we're trying to push to get done for the review. So we did a lab before this on these insects and their response to the environment. You all uh, collect these uh, roly polies or isopods, depending on what you wanna call them and we gathered them into um, some chambers and we gave them a choice wet or dry this color or that color and they headed one way or the other okay so most life doesn't just move randomly or respond randomly okay it reacts to the environment in some way okay it's low on food it does this it's Looking for a mate, it does this. It doesn't have enough water, it looks to get water this way or that way, okay? So, how do these responses develop and why do they develop is what we're gonna talk about today. Okay, we call these behaviors, okay? And all living things have some sorts of behaviors, okay? Even bacteria will have a behavior. If bacteria is completely surrounded by other bacteria, it, it has what's called quorum sensing, and it will say, hey, we can't grow anymore in this area. Um, all the way up to human behavior, which is very, very complex, its own field of study called psychology. We're gonna concentrate on animal behavior. Human behavior is a little bit beyond this. I might reference human behavior because I have a little bit of a medical background and I, I, I might use some examples from human physiology, but we'll get started. All right, now this says think, pair, share. We're probably gonna just think and share instead of pairing. All right, so if you think about animal behaviors, how do they get started? Let me just go with animal behavior from my world. You might have this too. Are we sitting there watching TV after school? Somebody will deliver a package or come to my front porch. My dogs go absolutely crazy. Why do they do that? Okay, that's a behavior that has arisen in most people's dogs. Stranger on the porch, stranger out in front of the house, stranger, they bark. What's that all about? Usually once that I greet someone and interact with them, they calm down. Why would dogs do that? Yeah. They're trying to protect me because they think I'm a member of the pack, okay? What did dogs evolve from? Wolves. Wolves are social animals. They live in packs. If I'm hanging out with my pack and I see some weirdo across the, the, the field, whether it's another dog or another wolf, I guess, or it's maybe something that's gonna threaten us, I'm gonna let the whole pack know and everybody's gonna get up and everybody's gonna kinda say, what are we gonna do with this? We're gonna fight, we're gonna run, we're gonna do this or that. So animals have this alert behavior and as, as humans have taken advantage of this, okay? My guards aren't, my, do my dogs aren't exactly guard dogs, but if somebody came on my porch in the middle of the night, they'd let me know, okay? Now they don't know the difference between a mailman and like someone who's probably trying to break in and steal all my stuff, but they, they have that behavior. You guys went through, looked at the animal, looked at its history and said, well, they probably do it for this reason. And you're right. Now, what purpose does that alert behavior serve? Like, why would they do that? They're trying to what? What's all life trying to do? Survive and reproduce. Survive and reproduce, okay? It's kind of like a funny way to say it, but the whole point of life is to get your genes, your DNA into the next generation, okay? And we'll look at some animal behaviors where the animal might be willing to die for its behavior. Maybe, why would they do that? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at things like that, okay? We've been studying this for a long time. There were several Nobel Prizes, one in the 70s for animal behavior. And we see all kinds of very interesting individual and social animal behaviors, anywhere from studying how a, um, a 
plants might react to certain things in the environment, those are behaviors, to how, what does it mean to teach a gorilla sign language? You guys have probably all seen that kind of thing, right? Uh, anybody know one thing those sign language gorillas have never done? They've never done this with their language. Anybody know? We've taught them, they'll talk, they'll, you know, they don't get the grammar exactly right, but they say meaningful things with sign language. Yeah. Marco? My? You're really close. They might describe themselves as in pain or tired. Sometimes they'll do that. No animal we've taught language to has ever asked a question, which is really wild. Like they've never said like, where is the food or why, why is it? Yeah, go ahead. It's, it's, there's a good Vsauce on it where it's a way of thinking about ab abstractly and instead of just like taking in the environment. Um, it's definitely a little bit more than we have time for today, but just something to get you thinking about studying animal behavior. We notice things like that. It's kind of really interesting stuff. So we call, we call the study of animal behavior ethology. Okay. Um, in humans, we, st we call behavior psychology. Okay, so ethology also includes evolution. So why do animals bark when strangers are nearby? Why do they do this? Why do they act this way? Why do they get mad when this happens? And why do they feel you know, threatened? Why do they feel friendly? Why do dogs wag their tail? That's a behavior. Probably gonna use a lot of dog behaviors today because most people are familiar with dogs. Okay, first let's define a behavior. A behavior is an animal or even plant's response to something in the environment, okay? Now, that stimulus can be internal or external. If you think on a physiology level, what are some things internally your body would do if it was in shock from you losing blood? So you got stabbed or injured and you're bleeding out. What are some internal behaviors you don't consciously say do this but your body will do it I, I got cut in the arm i'm bleeding really bad go ahead very good he's saying that your body's going to adjust by prioritizing blood to your brain and major organs what are some ways that happens your blood vessels out in your limbs will constrict and push all that blood into your core um, if you've ever seen someone in shock, they get really pale, right? And so other things that happen when you're in shock, you get really thirsty. Why? That's a thirst is a behavior. Well, it's more of a stimulus, but the actual drinking would be the behavior. If you lost a lot of fluid, you get thirsty, okay? Now you're not supposed to give a patient in shock fluids because um, you might have to go to surgery, so you gotta watch that sort of thing. Um, so Behaviors can be internal. Your heart rate will go up to try to push more blood to your brain. Okay, your clot. All those things are internal behaviors. External behaviors we understand really well. It's really hot in here, I'm gonna take my jacket off. Okay, um, animals might pant, that's a behavior. Okay, and I'm sure your dog doesn't decide, man, I'm gonna, let's pant right now. Okay, that just does it, all right? Behaviors can be from nature. That basically means it's an instinct or nurture. That means it was, it was basically taught the behavior. So nature would be something genetically encoded. An example would be like spiders don't have to learn how to, 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 to weave their webs. Different species of spiders will make their webs the same way all the time. It's genetic, it's in their instincts, okay? A nurtured behavior might be, um, I got my dog, I don't want it to bark anymore. I put one of those collars on it that says that shocks them or vibrates or whatever when they bark. Okay, that would be something they learned. If you want to think about a non-human type of nurture, okay, what if I eat red butterflies and get sick? 
I might stop eating red butterflies. Okay, don't eat that anymore. It makes you sick. Okay. The whole point of behavior is survival and reproduction, which somebody said for us already. Okay, get your genes into the next generation. Survive and reproduce. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this. Does anybody want a paper copy of the unit packet? It's also online. If you guys want them, you can pick them up over here. It's more than one page. If you want to fill in the guided notes, there they are. Okay. If you can just stay awake, you don't have to fill them in. Uh, it's really your choice. The filling those in is for you, not for me. Okay, some terminology we're going to use is um, the proximate cause, and this is how a behavior occurs or how it's modified. So maybe the animal is sleeping. Why does it wake up? It modified its behavior. Maybe the animal is um, in a group and it's trying to um, defend the group like we talked about. What, what is the uh, proximate cause? Usually like, oh, there's a threat, okay? Oh, there's a noise, I'm gonna wake up. So you stop or start doing something. Usually we're gonna talk about some external stimulus to cause the behavior. Anybody ever buy those real big, uh, they're not big, those uh, uh, really pretty fish in the little plastic cups they sell in the pet store, si Siamese fighting fish, beta fish. Um, what are some things you can do to get them to kind of like really react and, and really get their fins going and, and, and act aggressive? What do you do to them? Yeah, mine. Yeah, they don't react well with each other. So you put two of them next to each other and they sort of like start um, having this display and they get aggressive, okay? You can even put a mirror in front of them. So the stimulus is, I see, I see another fish. I see the bright colors, okay? Um, then there's the nurture side of thing. How does, how does, ex nurture can be any kind of experience. A lot of people think of nurture as like, especially in human behavior, like, my parents taught me that strangers were dangerous. Well, that is a nurture behavior, but it could be anything. It could be, um, you know, when I uh, uh, eat that mushroom, I could get sick, okay? When I uh, go into that little plant, that, that, that plant, thick plant area, there's thorns in there and that hurts, yeah. Nurture, it means to sort of tend or care for something. If you're a very nurturing parent, you're like really, um, good question. I don't know the etymology of the word, but I don't even know what root language it's from. Maybe somebody can tell me. All right. So then we talk about the proximate cause is what turns it on. The ultimate cause is like, why would an animal do this? Like. What's the question for ultimate cause? Survive, reproduce. Those are the two things, okay? Um, survive and reproduce, okay? There's an experiment you can do in basic biology class where you hand out this paper. Some people can taste something on it and some people can't, okay? So the people that taste it, they put it in their mouth and they go like, that tastes terrible. What, what, what behavior would that be? Like, why would that behavior happen? Why would you not eat it? There you go. So that's a behavior. Okay? Let's say I went and picked up a big spoonful of sugar and I eat it. Most people would say that tastes good. Now, some people I know will say, well, that's too sweet. But most people would say, well, that's, that's something good. Okay? And so why would we develop this attraction towards sweet food so you eat more of it because it's full of calories. And whenever you run across it, you better eat a lot of it before your competitors get it. Okay? Um, behavior now in unlimited calories for, human, for humans is not working very well. Something like 30, 40% of adults are overweight, including me. All right? All right. <laughs> How does behavior help the animal survive and reproduce? Okay? That's the ultimate question we're going to ask. And... We want to really look at, is it a nature or nurture behavior? Okay, nature or nurture behavior. All right. 
Here's a practice problem we're going to talk about together, okay? So, you've probably all seen the nature documentaries with the zebras out in the plains of Africa and so on. And, you know, if you pick up a water bottle or go to a water fountain, or, or even if you were, like, drinking out of a stream, okay? For humans, that doesn't feel like it's dangerous, okay? When you watch the nature shows and the zebras go down to the watering hole, what always happens? Who's always out in the background? Lion, some predators always out in the background. And so zebras have developed this, this behavior where they all don't drink at the same time. They take turns. And some zebras are out looking around. And when the predator comes in, they make a warning call and all the other zebras run away. Okay? So the FRQ side of this is, what is the proximate cause of the behavior? What would you say? Citing the predator, right? What is the ultimate cause? Like, why would they run away if they just see something unusual? Survive. To survive. You can't put your genes into the next generation if you're in the belly of a lion or a tiger or whatever, okay? So... That is a group behavior. It's just like your, your, your dog barking at the mailman when he walks up on the porch. Okay? Alright. I couldn't get this audio to work, but here's what we have. There are different finches, and they all have unique songs. Okay? So, these birds have their own unique song. If you're walking in the woods, there's people that go out and do the bird watching stuff. They'll hear like a, and they'll say, whoa, that's the uh, whatever house finch. And they have a very unique call or song, okay? Um, I read something about certain uh, songs going extinct in bird populations, but it wasn't this bird population. So how do you think birds pick up that unique song? First of all, what are the two possibilities? Nature or nurture? Nature means they're what? They're, they were born with it. How could we prove that it was nature or nurture? We could isolate them where they never heard another bird and see if they start singing the song. Okay? Um, what else can we do to them as part of a control of that experiment? What if we altered the song and we put it on a recording or something. Oh, they sing whatever they hear. Okay, you see what I'm saying there? They either sing on their own or they sing what they hear. So they either got it from nature, okay, I just sing the song because I'm a house finch, or they got it from um, something they heard. They learned it, okay? Uh, whales have this. Each whale pod has its own unique sort of signature a whale song so um, we could do either one now I had a recording for you but for some reason my YouTube is, is really slow today so I'm not going to take the time to do that okay yes sir I think I've heard read about that yeah go ahead cherish or keep all right so nurture is a latin word that means to cherish all right i like that thank you so let's look at some behavior here behavior can be innate okay innate or learned okay when i think of this i always think of like have you ever known someone who's like good at all sports like i've never played uh this sport ever in my life but they'll just pick it up and be like i'm good at it they seem to have an innate ability and then you have people who are like i like sports but i just have to work 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 compared to that person who maybe you're gonna play a new game in, in phys ed and they just pick it up instantly okay so some people seem to have innate athletic ability. We, that's a word you've probably used before. 
Some animals have innate behaviors. They don't need to learn them. They have instincts. Usually all animals of the species will do it in some form. Let me give you an example. You're, you have a pet cat or your friend has a pet cat. It gets up on your lap. You start petting it. What's it do? What's, what do they call it when it does this with its paws? It, some, when I was a kid, we called it kneading or making bread. That's what we called it. Why do cats do that? Does anybody know the actual reason? It's an innate thing they do. Yeah, they'll, they'll take their paws and kind of work them up and down. It's something kittens do when they're nursing mom, okay? So they'll kind of get... Why do they what? Snips your hand? I'll sniff. Well, animals find out a lot more about the world by smell than we do. So animals do a lot more smelling than we do. So we, we mainly check things out with our eyes. Animals get a lot more information from smelling than we do. But let me go back to this cat thing. When the cat gets into a pleasing situation, it just does that instinctually, okay? Nobody taught the cat to like do like, it just does it, okay? That's an innate behavior that goes all the way back to when it was a kitten, when it was happily eating, it would do that and that helps encourage mom to release more milk. And so the cat just kind of like, man, everything is all right with the world. So they'll just kind of start doing that. Okay, that's an innate behavior, okay? Um, spiders spinning their web is an innate behavior. Yeah, it's an, it's an attention getting. It's, yeah, it's an innate behavior. Perfect examples. What were you saying? I mean, it depends on what you consider language. We're going to get into that. They can, they can definitely signal each other and alert each other. There are some, like, have you ever watched those, like, pra uh, what are those, the meerkat things or the prairie dogs? They have all these different calls that mean different things. They say some dogs can understand up to, like, 20, 30 words. Like, they know what it means. Like, if you ever, I know when my dogs are at home and I go, you guys want to go for a walk? They, like, they know what that means. Like, so, but that's that's human interaction animals can communicate things to each other and they can do it in a wide range of ways like i was just going to talk about fireflies don't have to be taught their blinking pattern okay crickets will rub their legs together and they do it according for to signal each other but it's also related to temperature and that's just with cricket metabolism so those are all innate behaviors. It depends on the species, whatever you're going to say. I mean, it's either learned or innate. And I'm not a meerkat expert, so we're going to have to look that up. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what we're talking about, innate right here. Like smiling in just as an example for humans everybody kind of knows what that means right all right right okay so we're, we're we keep going to human behavior which we're not supposed to do but it, it's nice to reference it okay so those are those are innate behaviors. Babies cry when they want something. That's an innate behavior. You don't have to teach them that. And animal babies do that too, okay? A lot of animals will cry out when they're in pain. Um, 
Learned behaviors depend on things happening in the environment. Okay? I just read about this pod of, of orcas where they figured out how to ram into sharks and stun them and one orca started doing it and now the whole pod does it and they're just tearing up the sharks okay so that would be a learned behavior because not every group of orcas does that okay a learned behavior might be man those insects with yellow and black stripes you don't want to mess with them okay that's a learned behavior okay um so you have to experience the pain or the reward to do the learned behavior, okay? So experience does affect that. And other than those epigenetic things that we've studied with the mice licking, learned behaviors aren't really passed down, okay? And licking your, your young as a mouse would be an innate behavior, okay? So lots and lots and lots of learned behaviors are out there. We have to think about them outside of human, re human interactions between animals. Like, I trained my dog to go get the newspaper. That, that's a learned behavior, but we want to think about it in terms of environmental influence. And when you think about it, there are people that believe dogs and humans co-evolved where dogs had to find dogs that were able to express their needs to humans better like evolved to be taken care of better by humans is that a type of evolution i don't know that's kind of an interesting question okay behaviors can have components of both i'm going to use the dogs here again okay are there certain dog breeds that specialize in certain things that are naturally found in their, their wolf ancestors. Yes, okay? There are hunting dogs that are pointers. Have you guys ever seen them? They'll find the prey and they'll just like, stop. For That is a hunting behavior that signals to the rest of the pack that I've got something over here, okay? And they don't bark because they don't want to scare it away. So these pointer dogs, so we can train what I'm trying to say is we can get the dog to learn and sharpen one of its innate behaviors. Does that make sense? We can like really turn up in an in, in innate behavior. Okay. All right. Here's a little practice FRQ. We're just going to do this vote. We're just going to do this verbally. You don't have to write it down. And we actually already did it. So I got ahead of you here. With the bird example, experiment to test whether their song is innate or learned. You guys said you would isolate it and see if it just started doing it. That would tell me it was an innate. Uh, or you could play the recording to see if it was learned. Okay, so in our experiment, what's our hypothesis? Um, the null hypothesis might be that the, 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 sing, the bird song is an innate behavior. The alternative would be it's a learned behavior, okay? Independent and dependent variables. Um, depending on how you set the experiment up, you would say um, a lack of song is the independent variable or a recording of a song is an independent variable. The dependent variable be the type of song the bird has. Controls would be controlled for everything except you would want to keep everything the same except what the bird heard from other birds. Uh, keep, keep everything Oh, no, the control, I'm sorry, that would be the constants. The controls would be have other birds from the same um, clutch of eggs stay with their parents versus isolate them. That would be your control. Um, you'd set this up, let the bird go through its, its natural development, see what happens. And with the, with, with the song, you might want to do it with multiple sets of birds. Um, if the bird learn the song without if the bird learned the song in isolation that would point toward innate if the bird started singing the recording or maybe with another species that would be learned okay and we could justify that very easily okay all right so these innate behaviors have what are called fixed action patterns, okay? Some sequence of unlearned 
acts are linked to some stimulus, okay? Beavers build dams. Nobody has to teach them. Does anybody know what stimulates beavers to build dams? Yeah, am I? The, the noise of water. So whenever they hear running water, they'll say, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to, I, it's not a conscious thing. You can go down and play speakers of running water and beavers will build their dams higher, okay? So they want to dam up the water to make these nice little habitats and lodges and houses they live in. Whenever they hear running water, they'll try to put a wall in front of that to turn it into a pond instead of a, uh, like a creek or whatever you want to call it. So almost all of these innate behaviors are triggered by some stimulus, some, some external cue. Okay, let's pick one that's really easy. All right, these are some fish, and the males are bright red on the belly. Females are white on the belly. We see that a lot, sexual dimorphism. It, it happens with those fighting fish we talked about, those betas. So these fish are highly territorial, and they attack other males. Remember what we said about um, animals with, with sort of their mates? Males compete, females choose. Okay, so when another male cruises into the area, they see red, okay? Whenever they see red, they become aggressive, okay? You could drop a red magic marker in there and they're gonna get upset about it, okay? So this is a very, very innate, non-trained behavior. Now, what, what, what's the point of this behavior? What's the ultimate goal of this behavior? Eliminate the competitors. Very good. Remember, the ultimate goal for most life forms, in one way or the other, we could say, is to get their genes into the next generation. So if somebody else is coming around to, 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 to mate with the females, that's not my genes. Okay? Um, some other innate behaviors we'll talk about, migrations. No one has to like say to hummingbirds, monarch butterflies, um, sea turtles, all these different uh, species of sea turtles. All right, it's time to migrate. It's time to, got, remember the Finding Nemo, how they were riding the current, right? Nobody has to tell them to do this. It's triggered by environmental cues, things like the sun's position. Anybody ever go to beaches where there's sea turtles at? Okay, does anybody know, if you build a house on the beach, what are some of the rules about your lighting? It has to either be shut off or it has to really, really point straight down to the ground, okay? Sea turtles can, can confuse which way the ocean is based on porch lights, okay? They'll come up and lay their eggs. Instead of crawling back into the ocean, they'll, they'll crawl toward the light. So. It could, it could be they're, you know, they think the light is the stars or something like that, depending on the species. So we can, we can mess these up, yeah. It probably really depends on the species, but you can think of it this way. Usually, um, the moon at the beach there's some raised areas so maybe they're looking for a flat horizon I'm, I'm not a sea turtle expert i just know that you're not allowed to have your lights on i mean maybe their mating is tied to the moon when it rises on the on the ocean whether exactly on the gulf sides yeah so i'm not sure what the what in and, and, and I guarantee you it's different from species to species. And there's, there's many, many species of sea turtle, okay? Some animals have an organ in their brain that's sort of like a biological compass, and they can actually tell which way is north and south based on the Earth's magnetic field. Um, celestial clues, that just means things like the moon, sun, and stars. That, that, can, that can cause different animals to migrate or to mate all at once. Really cool stuff, okay? 
I believe this picture here is bats coming out of some sort of uh, cave in Mexico. It's pretty, pretty packed with bats. Um, animals often signal each other. Okay, so a stimulate a, a signal is from one animal to another. Okay, there's different ways this can happen. It could be visual, like this, like the fish we just talked about. It can be auditory. Okay. So animal either hears a noise and does this or that, like the beaver, or it makes a noise and eliminates or, or uh, alerts the other animals in the area, okay? It can be tactile, okay? Tactile just means touch. So some animals like to be in close contact with each other. Um, some animals like to be... Um, uh, an example of a tactile behavior would be a spider feeling the vibrations in its web, okay, when it's trapped something. They can be electrical or chemical as well. Some animals give off chemicals, and we call those pheromones. When you get stung by a bee, it releases a chemical that says to the other bees, why don't you come sting him too, okay? Um, that's with honeybees anyway. Um, a lot of times pheromones will be emitted as a mating signal, okay? Uh, a stimulus response chain is where multiple things have to happen in sequence for some behavior to, to take place. A lot of times we see that in animal courtships. Some animals have these really complex courtships and if they get messed up, it can be bad for their reproduction. Body movement, um, Animals have dances and things like that, which I think this one, I'm kind of a bee guy. I did a lot, I actually used to keep bees when I was a kid and I had to learn all this stuff here. Animals will use the sun for a compass, I'm sorry, bees will use the sun for a compass and they'll make this sort of zigzaggy dance toward where the flowers are, okay? And they even have a component to the dance that indicates distance, okay? And th this is kind of cool. If you think about like, when was math invented, okay? Is there a math component to this? Well, there's angles and there's abstraction, an abstract symbol of a value. So these bees are abstractly representing distance. So I guess that's math in a way, okay? So insects develop math before humans. Now they don't take it much further than this. They're not doing quadratic equations and things like that, but they are communicating numerical information to other members of their species. Coordinates, basically. All right, some other things. There are certain movements toward or away from a stimulus, okay? Kinesis, you've probably heard of kinetic energy. That's something about movement, okay? Either moving um, at a certain rate or a certain direction. Um, I'm sorry, this one's non, there's, it's non-directional, okay? Shivering would be a uh, innate kinesis behavior. There are different what are called taxis, okay? Photo taxis means you bend toward the light. If you've ever had a house plant, you probably know that it's gonna bend toward the light. Chemo taxis is movement towards some chemical um, or away from a chemical. Um, in a way, our, our, our pill bugs, we're doing chemo taxis toward water. Geo taxis is gravity. Plant roots always grow down, they, they can detect gravity okay so if we go back to our fish okay what's the proximal cause of the behavior when the fish what it's really easy it's not your question the proximal or sort of starting cause what makes it do it when it sees say the word red people yes okay what's the ultimate cause of the behavior. We already talked about it. Scare away the competitors, so my genes are the ones that go in the next generation, okay? 
So think about this in terms of proximal cause. And here's how you can break that down. Proximal. The animal does this when X happens. Ultimate. Survival and reproduction. So there's two sides to behavior. All right, let's look at some learned behaviors, okay? Now, it doesn't always have to be some sort of classical conditioning that you learned about in your psych classes. Imprinting, okay? Animals like ducks in this case, when they are born, they will, they have a brief period of time. A lot of people are like, it's the first thing it sees. That's not exactly true, okay? They have a brief period of time where they will imprint on their mother. And from then on, until they reach maturity, the ducks will follow mom wherever she goes. Okay? If you take mom out and replace mom with a chicken, they'll follow the chicken around. Okay? Other learned behaviors. There's spatial learning. Okay? That's where something is in space. Birds can find their hidden nest. Animals that have burrows in hidden places can find their way through them in the dark. Okay? Ants do that. So, spatial learning. All right? Let's look at some other learned behaviors. Monarch butterflies don't taste good to almost all the prey that eat them. Usually in nature, what do red and yellow mean? I am poisonous, right? Okay. Usually things that are bright red and yellow, bees, monarch butterflies, uh, there are certain snakes that have a black and yellow pattern on them. I'm sorry, red and yellow pattern on them. It usually means don't mess with me. You're wasting your time. I don't I'm, I'm really thinking of animals, not plants. Okay. So I know there's a yellow plant there, but think about black and white bees. Uh, bees are black and yellow. They sting. Okay. Monarch butterflies are bright orange. They don't taste good. Okay. So a lot of animals will mimic that. They're not really poisonous. There are flies that look like uh, bees. And I they fly around and everyone's like, oh, it's going to sting me. It's just a fly. Um, there's snakes that do it too. I think coral snakes and king snakes are very, very close to each other, black and yellow and red. All right. There's social learning. This is watching other members of the species, okay? Certain chimpanzees figured out how to open up certain types of seeds that are really rich in nutrition other members of that group also start doing it okay so imitation all right so what are the proximal and ultimate causes for imprinting in ducklings proximal is here is this thing that's around when i am born i'm going to follow it that's the proximal ultimate that's what takes care of me and if i want to survive to the next generation I'm going to follow that thing around. Okay? So how does this all lead to natural selection? Natural selection favors behavior that increase survival and reproduction. It can be so many different things, but here are some big ones. How the animal forages for food. Okay? And that can be the search pattern, recognizing the food, capturing the food, Picking the food that has the most nutrition in it. Okay, those are all behaviors. Animals that are good at this will pass that innate behavior onto their offspring or they will teach that behavior to their offspring. Okay? Mating patterns are a behavior. Are you monogamous or polygamous? Okay? So this is basically do you stick with one mate for life or do you work play the field okay there are evolutionarily there are pros and cons to both if you're watching a recording our bells aren't working so some people have manual bells all right 
So any kind of any time a species cooperates with other members of the species, that tends to make the plants more fit. So this, this leads to a whole new kind of behavior. It's called altruism, okay? Altruism is selfless behavior. So I might be willing to die for the beehive, okay? If I chase away all the, 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 the um, predators of the beehive by stinging them, I get one shot at that and I die, I will make my group survive, okay? There are these guys called naked roll mat, uh, uh, mole rats, and they're really weird, but they have a queen who only mates with a few males, and everybody else does all the work, takes care of the young, brings the food, so they'll sacrifice their um, opportunities for reproduction to protect the king and queen, okay? Pretty wild stuff. You see this a lot with mothers that will defend their babies um, as a behavior and defend them to the death, all right? Plants also do this. They respond, we talked about phototropism or phototaxis. They'll grow toward light. Photoperiodism, I think I put an L in there I shouldn't have. Photoperiodism allows plants to, to basically all bloom at the same time. If you drive down the road right now in spring, all these trees are blooming at the same time, okay? So they know what period of the year to bloom. That's a behavior. They all want to bloom at the same time because their pollen will spread to, 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 to um, mates, okay? Plants, this is kind of cool here. Some plants communicate chemically and uh, they have different ways to, they also have non-chemical ways. I got a little bit ahead of myself. Plants, plants have behaviors, I, more like structures they've evolved to, to stop things from eating them, like thorns, okay? But they also have chemical, de chemical um, um, defenses. If I start eating something and it either tastes terrible or makes me sick, that's a defense. Okay. Um, I, there's also plants that when they're attacked or being damaged, they'll release a chemical that causes the other plants around them to release a chemical that makes them um, um, taste bad. Okay. So lima beans will do that. Some other ones, you might see hydrangeas change color based on the soil. Um, so, this is my last slide, okay? And I know you're getting tired. I know this was a long lecture. I think I'm up to, oh, I don't know how long, but it's long, okay? You're walking in the woods and you see ravens feeding on a carcass of a moose and the birds are very, very loud. They're making a lot of ruckus, okay? And the researcher noticed that that noise attracted other ravens, okay? So most species, when they capture food, they defend it. You've probably seen dogs fight over the food bowl, right? If you think about this, what can you tell me about this behavior? Yeah? It's, what, what do we call it? It starts with an A. Altruistic behavior, okay? What might be the cause of that? In this species, ravens are eating a moose. Let's just start there. Raven's not eating a seed, it's eating a moose. Why would I want to call in all the other ravens? I want to save this for myself. It's way too much food. It'll go bad. What about, am I the only one that eats dead moose? No, I might be saying to the members of my species, everybody, everybody, get in here and eat this before something that's a threat to us come, comes, comes and finds it, okay? Hurry up and eat it as fast as you can. Why is that good for me? If I'm in a group of ravens, does my 
Raven, who's my brother, sister, my child, does it have my genes? Yes, so I'm kind of protecting my genes even though they're not from my gametes, okay? So we talk about this sort of stuff um, and we have to really kind of think ab abstractly sometimes, use the terminology I've given you to describe the behaviors. All right, we're gonna go ahead and stop the recording. That was a long one, but we're trying to uh, meet a deadline and have time to, to study for the test. So this has been um, Unit 8, Topic 1.